then when you come down and wants to go too much out of that one, you keep that a little more over here, then bring it to Louise and bring it a little more. You don't have space except to go yes. that way, so keep the space. In the it's like Seve. Seve had, Seve had thought the swing had too much of his angle. Then when he came down like here, it started dropping off. You want to do the reverse, you might want to drop it this way. You want to get this 90 degree angle and then let it, let it increase in there from this way. Seve already has the, had the big leg and then it came down. Look at the European logo. That's Seve's left arm for the club shirt. Seve, the swing they have in that, that's Seve's swing. There's too much push down. So his left arm is way too much push down. Too much. It's almost 20 degrees. It's almost like holding this. Does that have anything to do with the extensor action of the right arm? Uh, what Seve was doing? Well, fixing no, the all. No, yeah, this right here. Just pushing yeah. on this heel pad. Kelly said the right arm is always strive, striving to remain straight. Maximum. So uh, this is a major problem that SEBI had in Europe. Uh, if, you, if you do the school, I'll bring some of the SEBI down. Paris in 1999. Where the shaft is like this, right, right here. You've got to get that thing up there. Okay? There's two lines up there. You've got to keep that left arm, you've got to keep that left arm off that chest. This. Now, Payne Stewart did this. Payne, you look at Payne's pictures, you look at them over here, like everybody else, these guys are up here like this. You hit those two or three irons, you want to get that ball up in here, you got to get that. So, you know, this gets over here like this, you got to keep that left arm off the chest. Now, my picture's right here, you look right here, and I'm, I'm like this. This goes too far that way, now the arm gets off the chest, and you start coming over here, and you're stuck. Really nice. So, in that case, you see my right elbow, I'm going that way. Five. Six, and then come back to the place. Now let's have a shift of five degrees to the right. I get to the top, I set up the dress for this, and then to the top, you still going to come out to my left arm about five degrees inside of the top. Got it? That parallel top. And then come out from there, and it's by a couple inches. And then below this, off the right. It goes out, let's say this goes in about 10 inches, and then we'll see up out to the right, it comes out about 12 inches. It's almost the same. That's it. They're almost identical. What? Yeah. It's vertical. It's trying to go vertical as much as it can. Then you got to release your pelvis to come up. And then, you know, eventually, if you just keep coming all the way here like this, your shoulders will level out, level out. But you have to get the right shoulder to come up. They say it's coming over the top. You know, whatever you want. You went in, so you got to go out. Right? And if you do one more thing, I'll show you. Put the top this one. If I go, I'll uh, point this right here. Right here. Watch. If I go off the top of my swing here, now P4 to P5, now look at this. I went out here, let's say 10 inches, then I went down here 6 inches. Okay, did that? P4, P5. I went out more, I went down. So if you're going to go more out, the physics wants to throw a thing off that one. So then once you go P4, P5, now Right elbow is going to step straight down, and the right shoulder is going to come vertical. That drives everything down to the six. The right shoulder still has to keep going vertical. The pelvis has to keep going vertical. Because watch, if you go more outward, physics wants to throw this that way. That's the outward, so I got to check, I got to force that to get down. I do that with my P4 to P5, and the right elbow. The space, this right flexion of the right elbow, P4 to P5 stays the same. P4, P5. That stays the same. We're different. The gap here narrows. Plus the narrow. P4 to P5, this doesn't change. This angle will change. This will change like this. But not this flexion. That does not change P4 to P5. It does not change P4 to P5. Okay. Then it says P4 to P5. P5 to P6. Then it changes. It turns it down. So the right elbow, you got to straighten out the downstream, but you don't straighten it out until P5. You know why? If you do this, if you go P4, P4 out to P5, like this, you should come here, boom, it comes like this, lower in this, that's deltoid. If I go tricep, P4 to P5, like this, the hands move on a circle delivery pad. And your club gets lost too. Is there any time where that delivery path is good if you're not trying, I mean, you might do that if you're really trying to hit it high. Not that, not, not that early. You don't, you don't change it till five to six. Four. Okay. Okay. Don't change it. 
the key here again, if the, if the, if the right elbow tricep, tricep right, start, straightens out too early, you lose your leg to it. That's what the average guy does. He tries to straighten the right elbow too early. He's got to hold it. He's got to hold it, but the elbow's got to close that gap. It's got from P4. That's the secret move on ground, P4 to P5. This gap has to narrow. It's like throwing a baseball. Baseball, you keep the angle, then you go. If you go like this to roll it, then you throw the ball right in the ground. That's what the girls do. Okay? So you got to get that gap here, 90 degree angle, P4 to P5, like this. If you want to go the other way, you get really jammed. Really jammed. Some guys do that. A few players on the top come down like this, and you see them getting more jammed. You guys have done it. good. That is the absolute law about the P4 to P5. You're up here like this. This gap has to look at the changes. Here. P4 to P5. This narrows. Deltoid fires. This is the lower. Then the tricep, P5 to P6. And you got to straighten the right elbow out, the tricep, and look at it. It's just sequence P5, right to P6. Then, then it goes right wrist at P6, 85 degrees bent. You want to see P, it's out here like this. Now P6 to P7, the right wrist goes from 85 degrees down to 20. Degrees. If you set up neutral position, ball back and say P2. Now when I come right down here, I'm going to go just right back here. Then I have to place that angle right where I was at the wrist. And then I have to make sure the pivot keeps going like this. If I slow that down, it goes like that. And the shot's going like this. So the, the higher you want to hit the ball, if you keep moving it up, you're going to have to keep that right shoulder moving forward faster. Forward, 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 forward. It goes forward and forward quickly. Yeah. The only way you can do that, the weight's got to travel, you've got to reach the pelvis. you got to be there, like this, and the head's got to go away. All the, that's called a pivot train. How do you call it a pivot train? Pivot train. The whole train's got to keep pivoting. Be able to keep the line of compression, keep going like that, and everything's got to keep moving. So one of the ways you stay relaxed, you're going to keep moving all the way through. Kelly called it uh, right shoulder 